We have returned here at the NAL Doha Jesse. Jacob here with you on the desk, getting ready for our next match of the day. It's going to be Mirage versus Xset. Now, Mirage off to a rough start in stage one, and in stage two, it just doesn't let up. Mirage catches some bad breaks, right? They're trying to go through a little bit of a roster shuffle as well. They've got two new people in here, but we also just found out that Melted is a little bit under the, uh, the weather as well. So, uh, Gara, their coach, is going to be subbing in. It's it's rough times for Mirage, right? Yeah, that's yeah. not a great change that you want to see. Nope. Gera is a fantastic coach. You know, he's a great guy. I love him to death, but he's not a great player. And so him stepping in for Melted is going to be a downgrade for sure. What can you do? Yeah, I mean, if Melted's not feeling it, you, you don't want to put him through anything that's going to, you know, make it worse, right? You don't want to put any more strain on him. I get Your that. Your comes first, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, shout out to Gera for stepping up and for, for making this happen. And, you know, we've seen some, some coaches without a lot of playing experiences pop off before. Before. Yeah, so who knows? yesterday. Yeah, I mean, call it maybe has a little more playing experience <laughs> a little bit, than little Gara, bit. but yeah, I mean, bit. the coaches Same. winning games precedent has has been set though. It's okay. we've had it happen multiple times. Yeah, we you have. Know, we had Goddess, former player, coach. Yep. You know, winning last day. We had call out, former Ojo player. Has done it. Gotcha has done it. Call out did it yesterday. Gara has. There you go. Won it's one time, game Gara. as a sub. To be fair, true. he That's has true. one pro win because Mirage beat Beast Coast last stage. Oh, true, true. Here's the That's problem. Right. I forgot, yeah. For Mirage, they just went through a roll shuffle. Benji's on flank watch. is not playing a secondary or entry role. Mm -hmm. uh, Melted was the one playing primary entry because now they're, like that shift feels like it's been really good when he moved away from flank watch to do that and Kento's coming in playing Finca. Yeah. But you're still having Gera replace the guy who's meant to be getting killed like on, on, like on a primary basis mm -hmm. and there's nothing to suggest that he's been like grinding ranked since the <laughs> end of stage one so Unlikely. is his shot on point or is he going to be back on blitz like we saw from before well, I mean, the thing is, too, is that, uh, you know, Mirage, uh, like we said, they're going up against Xset, which doesn't really make anything a lot easier. No. So it's Listen. this is going to be one of those ones. We're going to get into teams a little bit more. Uh, you know, let's talk. Let's continue to talk a little bit about Mirage, but it's going to be a rough one today. Obviously, uh, Kento and Nix stepping into the roster in stage two. Nix returning. Kento yeah. coming up from Challenger League. Um, and again, you know, Melted, unfortunately, replaced by Gera today hopefully for uh, just this one game. But this squad has its work cut out for them, don't they? They certainly do. I thought that Kento had a pretty decent start the other day. He was I playing agree. the Finca, a classic, you know, entry fragger um, bringing up or brought up from Challenger League. I thought he did well. He, I think he yeah. was positive on the day overall against a strong TSM. So it was a good showing. Nick struggled a lot. Um, he went 0-6 for the first six rounds. Yeah. Really wasn't finding any success. He was playing on Sledge, so he was supposed to be in a fragging role. It just never seemed to work out for him. It almost looks similar to last stage where sometimes he was getting, or sorry, last time we saw him last year, where sometimes he was playing a little bit farther away from his team than I would have liked. Sometimes it felt like he wasn't really working together with the squad. There was never really a potential for a trade there. He had a, a couple moments for sure. He had a big clutch as well when he moved over to defense. So it wasn't all bad for Knicks, but it certainly wasn't a shining report card. That was going to be the case for this Mirage team anyway. I feel like there would be some things to iron out. Where Kento was going to fit was obvious from where he got picked up when he played for LSR and all through CL. We knew he was going to be the, like tasked with frags. We knew he was first in, sometimes first out. If he needed to be the one like primary for executes, we knew Kento was going to play entry. The only question remained, how was Nick's going to fit back into this lineup kind of alongside that? Because we know he's got the reputation for being first in, but sometimes he can't do anything unless he dies first and right. then is able to like call from the background. That was the reputation of Nick's from last year when he played for this exact same Mirage squad. I'd like to think he's adapted beyond that, but when we saw how many times he was first death yesterday. That alone is a cause for concern about how the leadership on this team is now is like flexing back from Thomas to Mirage again. So it's it's just the, the, these very little details that we want answered over the next couple of days before we really start to figure out can Mirage get out of the rut that they've been in for so long. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Xset. Xset is a team that had a pretty explosive start yesterday. They're a team that is so much fun to watch. I've always said that. That proved true through stage one, through the major. Now here they are coming into the bang in the very beginning of stage two. And no one banged bigger than Spirits, who was our MVP for yesterday. The guy crushed it on the map. 21 kills. And so I feel like against Mirage, against a little bit of a, a Mirage with even more of a disadvantage than their roster shuffle going on, like... 
they're gonna get an easy win here. I'm just gonna say it. They should. You would hope, and Spirits will hopefully be leading the charge there. One of the few players that can really pop off in the NAL without playing uh, that Finca role that we see so many teams really lean towards. Now, of course, Exit do have a Finca player, but Spirits typically on the Yana has been the one this stage that really has popped off and gotten so many of those in, uh, entry kills. Against SSG, he shut down Rampy so hard on the roam. Rampy got nothing going on the defensive half, and of course, Spirits was the main reason behind that. Nice to see him um, having a good game. We've seen this before from Spirits. He is one of those really explosive, fiery players who has some games that just look ridiculously good for himself. He has had poorer games as well. I don't think he's been the most consistent player, but so far through one game in the NAL, he's off to a great start and you can't take that away from him. I love just like the boombox sitting in the, the chair <laughs> next to him. They're just like rocking out like before the match begins apparently. I thought, I was wondering yesterday, is that like somebody's PC that's just like sitting in a chair? But nah. I'm pretty sure that is where the music is coming from. <laughs> no, this is like, this is just like the kind of vibe that they've got. It's a team of friends, but it's a team of friends that very clearly understands where they're all supposed to fit together in this puzzle. It's not like they're trying to, they're having to trip over one another yeah. for like access to what they want. It's it's nice that they're able to, to, to be like this relaxed and play their first two games at the stage from home, from a very comfortable environment. And all of them really feel like th <laughs> that. that is just where they're meant to be. That is like the most pro gamer house scene I've ever <laughs> seen. Like everyone's got their feet up on the table, just enjoying some, you know, like a shake or something, enjoying some food, everyone's probably listening hoodies. to us. Y Yaga's you know, there, yeah. somewhere off in his own world. Yeah. <laughs> got a Pokemon plush over the monitor. It's all coming Every together. time I've been to like a, a pro gamer house, that is the exact scene I've seen. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I mean, we talked about this team too. And like, the fact is, is you know, Coach Bodega is suspended for a year. So they're not going to have him on stage helping him out during the matches like they usually do. But when you're playing from home, you know, you've got that comfort level that you don't get on stage. So that is not probably going to be as much of a concern early on. But remains to be seen. Now, though, we will see where the map is going to be. Or well, we it's going to be in the video game. It's in the computer. But which map we're going to be playing on, the bands are in. So let's see what it'll be. Let's find out. Last time we saw these two squads face off in stage one, it was a game on Villa. 7-2 was our scoreline from Exet. I don't right. expect us to go back there because it was so devastating for Mirage. And they've made a couple of roster changes, but still feels like a map that they're going to want to that they're going to want to avoid throughout this series. Looking forward to uh, what they have otherwise. We have a couple of new ba uh, new maps that have been perma banned by these two teams. Exet like to perma theme park. Mirage like to perma skyscraper. So there is still border in there, which honestly, Exit don't love playing either. Um, when it comes down to kind of the maps that they perma they have played it in the past, but it's certainly not one they lean towards too often. So we'll see going forward into this map band phase. Uh, another clubhouse is possible as well, although it's not a great record for Mirage when you look back to last year and they didn't play it much, uh, in fact, at all through, uh, or they played auction, okay. They didn't play it much last year though. I think there's a couple of things you avoid if you're Mirage. Any map that Exet is good at. Problem is, that's just <laughs> it's hard to find. What? Yeah, yeah. It's it, 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 the kind of thing you can't Ugh. really find a loophole because Exet have proven their map pool is really expansive. So, mm -hmm. are you going to something that you know your opponent isn't go. that great with, or something that where you think you have a slight like statistical or strategical advantage here? Let's find out. Let's get some answers. Oregon, the first one off the field for Mirage. They're on a three-game losing streak here. They lost seven-two to Astral, seven-four to Parabellum, seven-four to TSM. You probably don't want to try to repeat that and extend that streak any farther so it's going to go first theme park second another perma band that i mentioned uh just a moment ago that exit will take off of the board chalet and skyscraper skyscraper coming through from exit being a band is a bit of a weird one for me um they played it twice at the major they beat liquid and then lost pretty hard to astralis but again mirage have typically perma band skyscraper that might be a band that exit just kind of don't want to show off that map because maybe they think well we're playing mirage with their coach Let's you know try to go to a map that we've shown a little bit more often already, and we don't have to worry about revealing any strats there. Border going next, and then Clubhouse to follow. Border's a weird one as well from Mirage. That's a map that um, Exet have perma banned right up until the playoffs when they let Astralis pick them, and then they won. So I huh. guess maybe you're thinking it's a good map, but then you look at Mirage's record on Border as well, and that's where they beat Beast Coast when they had their coach 7-4 uh, last stage. So I'm a little shocked they're taking that one out of the uh, out of the pool. Mirage, I think, need to take Bank out at this stage in the game, and they do, which is perfect because that's a map that Exet have shown they're very proficient with. Even in that one loss they had to SSG back during the regular season, it was still a map I figured they could have taken before they really got on their hot streak. No cafe for Exet because that's one that they have essentially permabanned all the way since stage one, unless 
there was some other major play that somehow I'm, I'm forgetting, which means we're going back to Villa, which is the last map both teams played on. Like you mentioned, it was a 7-2 victory for Exet last time we were here. And aside from having Gareth sub in as a coach, this is the time where we saw Marmalade try to go for plan attempts that didn't have much coverage. There was a lot of internal turmoil behind the scenes for Mirage. That map went essentially nowhere. So as far as I'm concerned, if you wanted a battleground that was kind of going to even the odds a bit, I don't think Mirage found it here. Yeah, I don't get it from Mirage. Um, I'm sure they've been practicing in the back lines and, you know, scrim results have dictated that this is the best map for them of the of the ones left in the pool. But yeah, yeah looking at their history, it is a confusing pick. And it could be one of those things, too, where for Mirage, this is a game where, you know, you to be honest, you're probably not coming into this one expecting to get the win against a team like Exet, given the situation the team is in right now. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to say, hey, you know what, let's use this as a practice one. Let's use this to kind of run some stuff in a real-world scenario and kind of see what True. we can do. That could be the approach, too. I'm not saying, like, they're not going to put everything they've got into it. I'm just saying that when you're a team in the situation, especially if you look at it from the coaching perspective, you ask yourself, how can we take this situation and turn it to our advantage? How can we use this to at least learn something to get something out of it you you're know? gonna try but the only saving grace is that this moment is happening within the first week because you're Very only true. gonna have seven more games after this though most of which are gonna be run through in just the next couple of weeks time so it's yeah. nice that if you had to have a hiccup game that maybe you didn't have big, big expectations for it's now but it's still a detriment and the, 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 this has to crush your mental because you had new players coming in hoping for a fresh start well, we'll see what happens. Just, just waiting a little bit longer to get that start officially going, I suppose. But we got to get some predictions officially going here. Let's send it to our, our casters first to see what they have to say. Blue and Stokes standing by. Blue, you can't, you can't toss it over to Stokes right away. I'm just letting you know. Like Stokes <laughs> even good. called you out on that last time. So I want, I want the blue prediction first. Well, thankfully, let's, let's hear it. This one's an unfortunately easy prediction um, with the factor. How dare I you? you. <laughs> with, with, I gave you an easy one. Do you hear that? Wow. With, with the factors playing into it for Mirage and that they have a fill-in now, I really can't justify picking them in this situation. So it's, it's going to go to Xset by default because of that. You, you want to know what production just told to me? What? I'm the only one at 100%. So I feel like my Ooh, choice wow, is the only one that really bro. matters here. Sam, uh, but I got to find go me someone who you know. cares, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You got me there, Jacob. You did get me there. And it's <laughs> no not going to last very long harsh. either. I'd be surprised right. if I make it through the rest of the day. But, I mean, <laughs> that's the pick. It's exit. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, uh, two easy exit picks for the casters. Our analysts you feel any differently. It's ready. Tough. Tough not to. On three, three two, two, one. Did I was just trying to. Don't stumble so over me here. We're so synced. Oh my. Oh, no, we're synced in reverse. There you go. It's X set. I'm just throw it up. It's X set. Okay. Yeah. X set is Thank going you. to be the pick for uh, for uh, for these two as well. No shock there. X set heads. Mirage will be tails. Will the coin be? Uh, the coin doesn't think. It's a it's a it's an inanimate object. I wouldn't mind getting a firmer lead on oh, it. My goodness. Mirage. The feeling on the back on, the, on my palm is telling me something crazy. It's uh, it's tails. The coin is saying Mirage. Nice. The coin has picked Mirage twice in a row, by the way. <laughs> the coin loves Mirage this stage, apparently, or at least this week. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate that, right? I mean, everyone's kind of picking by the numbers. How can you not, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, Mirage, you know, it's, it's a tough situation to be in. So the coin is, has your back for, for what it's worth, I suppose. <laughs> There you go. Let's find out what the community vote is going to be. I would imagine that one's going to be Exet as well, but let's find out. It is indeed Exet. So there Twitter. you go. Exet pretty much across the board, at least from all sentient beings anyway. But the map remains to be seen. You never know. Let's check out the community poll as well. What do you got to vote on here? Who's going to be the top fragger today? Spirits or Benji Mula? Oh, why you got to do Benji Mula like that? <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I'm, hey, I'm rooting for I mean, Benji. I'm, I'm rooting for Benji. I've always been rooting Benji. for Benji. It's the just like individual where performance can happen. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool with it. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, there you go. Uh, what do you, the viewers at home, think? Let us know, of course. Hashtag R6NAL. Go vote on the Twitter poll as well. But we're going to take a momentary break. And when we come back, the map begins. Exet versus Mirage. Let's see who takes it right after this.
two tripping aquafina i'm sipping 15 kept a weapon on me blow make bitches i'm my my business stack chicken like what it's gonna be true when the cut a you want us for run when i tell a peace love is love love is love i'm kino and this is the nar Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the NAL. Getting ready to hop into our second game of the day here between Mirage as well as Xset. Some unfortunate circumstances befalling Mirage. Of course, one of their players, unfortunately having COVID, is not going to be able to play in today's match. That means their coach, Gara, is going to be filling in for them. Going to a map like Villa, I feel like this is going to be a very difficult task, unfortunately, for the Mirage team to come out on top of, considering the fact that they have that fill-in and they're going to a map that's as complex as Villa. A lot to play into that, especially on the attacking side. Uh, and unless Gara is going to be, I imagine Gara is going to be filled into a pretty simplistic role to try and make up the difference, but there's still going to be kind of a lack there. And that's where it's really tough for me to see them winning this one. But I've been surprised before and I'd be happy to be surprised again here. So I'll have to see if Xset potentially will give it up at all inside of this one. Do want to give a nice shout out to Kino as well. It's his birthday. So happy birthday to Kino. Make sure you guys wish him a happy birthday on social media as well. He's going to be playing this match. We'll see if he can get a nice birthday W for himself. The odds are definitely looking good, but let's get into the map and see if it's as true as we've been prepping it up to be as we go live with the bands now between these two teams. Flores will be removed off rip from Mirage as Xset will get set up for their offensive bands as we fly into beautiful Italy here for Villa. What does Xset feel like taking away from this offensive unit? We've already got the Flores band in and potentially a uh, change out here for Diaz as he'll be coming back in momentarily, I would assume. Thatcher is going to get banned out on the offense just to slow down some of the takes when it comes to this hard breach. We'll see how they want to slow things down on the defensive end this time around. Yep, probably going to finish the bands, guys, uh, in case anyone's worried that we're not going to rehost this. We probably will, so we just have one of finish of the bands more than likely before we potentially do anything like that. So we are this here for a moment and then we'll figure out how things are gonna roll after this. So anyway, keeping the discussion going about the bands, pretty straightforward here so far. Well, Mai's gonna follow it through and keep us on that track as he'll be removed out. And then we'll leave ourselves with just one more here for Mirage to remove and they're gonna be knocking now. Let's take a look and see. It's gonna be Mira, so no real huge surprises here when it comes to the band pull on Villa. Yeah, fairly straightforward when it comes to the bands here for Villa. And again, you got to be feeling for Mirage when it comes to this matchup. Not the greatest of games yesterday, but definitely had a pretty solid showing, I would say, up against TSM on Oregon, a 7-4 matchup in between those two, as well as um, uh, Benji and Marmalade, both having quite the game yesterday as well. Uh, Marm with a pretty big clutch when it came to their basement defense. But I mean, things are going to get even more complicated now for Mirage and specifically Kento, as he's a fresh face to Mirage and is now up playing alongside his coach that he's not really used to playing alongside <laughs> of. So it uh, should make for a pretty interesting series here. Obviously, as you guys saw, all the sentient beings, as Doa was saying, picking Xset for this one. So I'm still favoring Xset in this situation. I think, if anything, that is even more detrimental to Mirage, even past what they've already been dealing with. So we'll have to see what they can possibly muster on this defensive end, as that's where it's going to start. We're just confirming that everything is right as rain in game, folks. Before we toss it back onto your screen, and we're live. We're good as gold. We're back in. Mirage will be starting things off on AVG. And since we are done with the band phase, yes, indeed, folks, that means we will have a zombie back into play here for play day two of the NAL. As Benji will be piloting this character throughout round one. Obviously, we didn't see her much in our first matchup, but she was banned out by the Sonics. Not one going to have to play against that. Still did not help to save them, though, in their initial matchup. As Spoiler alert. They ended up losing that game as TSM was able to come out of the gates on their attacking side, at least swing it with some absolutely beautiful assaults. Was able to take quick control because of that. Away from that, ladies and gentlemen, as we move into this next game, of course, things are going to continue to move towards, well, their team's favor here, so we're still at the very start of it. Mirage giving us a pretty straightforward opening setup here on AVG. Unfortunately, we'll fall victim, though, in a very peculiar position, as we're going to see Kino get the first kill of the game here against Marm. 
that had to have been from the study window. That study I window so, through the yeah. soft breach panel and then killing Marm inside of Bar. That's that's the one thing about Siege is sometimes when kills like this happen, it's like, all right, time to break out the uh, protractor here and figure out <laughs> this gonna... angle. Exact trajectory of these bullets. Put up the police tape. We gotta investigate this crime scene real quick. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like a detective whenever that happens. <laughs> Bring gotta the... try and put it back together. I feel like Bring uh, in CSI. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I gotta sit there and like close my eyes and let the room rebuild itself, see what happened there. But that's super unfortunate for Mirage. They're lacking their smoke quite early on. They are still gonna have some forms of denial, mostly inside of the nitro cells, and some potential impacts if Benji wants to try and hurl that at a plant spot, but obviously it's not gonna be fatal damage, just some very serious damage unless somebody's already tanked up. But as you can see, Xset has been able to slow down their game plan overall because of that initial pick. They're just taking their time and seeing if they can potentially catch somebody off guard on this rotation, which would be Kento. He's actually standing on top of a drone at the current moment, so more than likely Xset is aware of his position. He's going to swing around. Almost a freebie there for Yogg, but he's going to miss the head by just a pixel of, as Kento will be able to get back into cover. He's being primed on point and nearly manages to grab Nyx. This is on top of some massive damage being done to Benji also. So that's two more players virtually down already here. Just need another bullet to send them into an actual down state. And this is on top of another player being fully killed. Benji potentially going to be the next up to fall victim to that. Kino potentially getting saved there by a nice little juice up coming in from the Finko being played by Spirit. So that brings him back up to a more palatable amount of HP. And ultimately, all left on to Nyx here. Exit have no problem knocking him out though as he's just a lone strike against the entirety of the Xset roster. So they clean it up and get a flawless round to start things out here on Villa. 15 minutes ago, Xset were practically partying inside of this room with a massive JBL speaker and <laughs> eating food. And now we're at a time where they're decimating Mirage. It's I feel like that, that speaker might still be going in the back of the room. I, I feel like it is, dude. They're just back there listening to Pop Smoke right now. <laughs> it's like... Production was like, all right, you need to get that thing out of frame, though. But <laughs> oh, my gosh. Otherwise, yeah, they, they're jamming it. They got everything, man. They got every, they got every Chicago drill rapper on right now in the background <laughs> of this, dude. Uh, I'm telling you. But Xset, I mean, they're looking as right as ever. I mean, there's there's really not too much to talk on this. If you guys watch the Charlotte Major at all, this is just prime Xset. This is what they do. They decimate defenses, especially when it comes to a lot of their game plans. And uh, nothing's changing up just yet. I think the only thing that's changed up from yesterday is that Spirits didn't kill three people in this round. Definitely one of the most in-your-face teams that we have in the league right now with regards to how aggressively they tend to play things out. So no surprise they pull off the same exact thing here at the very start of the game, getting that immediate pick against, I believe it was a Marm, inside of the site from their rappel outside of study, and then following it through with a nice clinical clear, not giving Mirage an inch inside of this scenario here. A lot needing to be made up by Mirage. They are indeed going to give up the AVG hold transition over towards our secondary upstairs site. We will, of course, see the extension into AVG, which is going to be defended probably by at least one to two players on the squad to waste time as Exit will try to clear this. But otherwise, of course, the defense will fall heavily into that trophy as well as Astro Rooms as we reach the later point of this round. It doesn't look like we have any mute jammers on this triple wall here for Statue. With Xset's uh, offensive lineup here, this is looking more like a direct route towards that part of the building. They more than likely aren't going to want to try and deal with any positioning over towards AVG, but we'll just have to see how to deal with Kento down low as well. So the potential for the player in Kitchen to be punished is pretty high. Gomez is actually going to end up hopping inside a pantry. That was why you saw that silhouette fall down. Nobody paying attention to the hatches either. That's a really big misstep there from Xet and one that we don't see too, too often. Nix may be able to get away with one as a result of that. So Spirits goes down. That means no mid-round boost to the health pools of Xet either because the Fink has been removed. Should also mean as a result of that that the six set of nades that we saw from Xet initially is going to be brought down just to four here. Spirits will not be given an opportunity to use those. Yaga though has made up for the player difference now by picking up an exchange against Kento more than likely roaming around here in the basement as well. That removes the Valkyrie from play and like I said before, evens us out into a 4v4. The good news for Mirage is that they're holding a lot of space across the map, but that also allows Xset some options to get some picks later on in this round as well, depending on what the defensive matrix is built up like. Do they have any supporting angles for these members? Exactly what is being dedicated to these spaces to make it to where they can actually survive the night? Well, for Xset, it's going to be back to the drone game to try and discover some of these positions that we were just talking about as they're attempting to clear out some of the positions down low as well as around Master. One of them will indeed tag up one of the Prismas here from Alibi. 
as Marmalade will bounce back and forth between this and the concrete door for Master. Almost a beautiful shot there from the AK-12 as a singular bullet rings out, but won't land true. He was going to hop inside of Master now as Marmalade will tag up Gomez. He'll re-peak here. This could get pretty dicey for these team members, but all oh, beautiful shots from both members as Marmalade swings back into two separate guns on one angle. Gomez going to be able to push things into the favor of Xset now with that pickup here. Marmalade now out for the count, not going to be able to help things out anymore with those aggressive swings from the oh Alibi. Nades cooking out directly onto Nix's head as well. He just barely is able to get out of range of that one, thankfully. Keeps himself in the fight, however, and already to fend off some of the pressure coming back in as Benji also strikes true, I believe, from the inside of Statue, where indeed he's going to be able to find at least one pickup. Gara gets himself onto the board here, too, with one. So Exit needing to fight a little bit harder this time to get their W onto the board here, as they've only been able to bring it down to a 2v1, and that assumes, too, that Benji Benji is not going to be revived. Probably a safe bet, considering of his current position here and as well, considering the time that is remaining in the round. But still, Exit need to isolate him, get themselves into the site. Oh, no. oh and they'll be able to do that. Gara thinking that maybe he wasn't spotted out as he saw the head from Diaz, but indeed, Diaz is able to spot him too. He picks up the kill, and Exit get the round. It's so unfortunate. The last little hop up from that uh, clamber ends up just seeing the top of Christian's head laying down inside of Trophy. And this right here, folks, this is what you'll tend to see, especially when it comes to like subbing in for like a coach or something like that, when it comes down to some more of those clutch moments where you just try and play it out on time and try and play it quite safe. Now, that's the thing about pro play. Uh, when you are stagnant in what you're doing and you're not exactly too active, it's pretty easy to punish you. I mean, they do have a million different places to check, and if they do misstep into that room, then Christian more than likely gets one and has a really, really good shot of taking that round. But unfortunately enough, they clear out in an unfortunate way for the Mirage defense and end up winning the round instead. X set with a very quick 2-0 here to begin us on Villa. Exit starting things out with a lot of promise. And as well, an interesting repick if Kino ends up locking it in. I'll kind of hold off on talking about it more. Yeah, we had a Kali being softlocked there for a second. Definitely would have been a point of conversation, but he's gone back on it over towards the ace. So nothing really to bring up there is... Obviously, Kali is not an operator we get to see brought out very often at all. I'd say she's in the bottom five of attacker picks, if not lower than that, potentially. Oh, Xset out and onto the field. They'll be attacking AVG for the second time around. And that means Mirage with the double defense on this, just shifting things over to Trophy and Statuary to try and get something done on this defensive side. Started out with some promise, but Xset quickly brought it back and winning it out in the 1v2 situation when it came down to it. So now for them, they have to try and reinsert themselves when it comes to this take. Last time around, we just saw Xset really decimate the site setup and eventually rotate around the entirety of this part of the building and take out a lot of Mirage's stragglers that uh, were around 90 as well as Skull Door. Speaking of stragglers, we're going to have Kento off on an extended hold here for Concrete. He's going to be holding things down on Master Spirits. is going to pick up gear up. And now, with that being said, it looks like they've already got most of the control when it comes to this area. I mean, it's super unfortunate for Christian. I believe he got taken down at the top of main. That's going to be both of those ADSs gone. They don't have a Wamai either. And with Nyx dead, this is already looking like an X that round. It's an X set just able to snowball oh. their way into a winning position. It seems oh, so, no. That's amazing. so unfortunate for Spirits as he was priming a nade as he went down, meaning a nade was left in his hands. X have already made up the difference though and are just leaving Benji off on an island here. He can't escape it. Gomez strands him there and it's X set to lock in number three. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna talk too too much on Mirage for this game. I'm just gonna let you at home know. Uh, just because yeah, I of mean, the situation. They've but, got a fill in, and they had maybe yeah. like two to three hours notice that they were gonna be playing with a fill in. Yeah. I, I would imagine. Absolutely. Least, so, and, and even yesterday they had a really good game against TSM. Uh, and if you guys watched that game yesterday, I just want to remind you, Melton was not feeling great during that game. Mm -hmm. He was not. He is not playing today due to how he was feeling and the discovery of that. Uh, you know, he really couldn't do anything in this kind of environment. So, uh, you know, coming into this and with Christian playing, I don't really think we're going to be seeing exactly. the best of the best when it comes to Mirage and what they've been working on, which again, super unfortunate. They've had some very uh, recent roster changes, so uh, not being able to continue to work on things and evaluate your progress as a team is definitely something that they're uh, going to want back, but just unfortunate circumstances for the, uh, them at the end of the day, especially going up against a team like Axet. This is not a team where you don't want your full power to try and uh, take them out because you can see what the results are already looking like.
Like the uh, desk was saying, Mirage potentially just going to use this as a pseudo scrim to an extent, more than likely, where they just kind of try out their strats, try to exercise it across the map as heavily as possible, and then ultimately, at least with the way that things are currently going, they will probably end up on the losing end of it. But we'll have to wait and see. We have seen at least in round two a moment of hope for them, as actually we're doing a pretty good job of contending at least inside of the site fight at the end of the round. But Exit as well was able to kind of take a moment back, restabilize things, and still end up coming out on top of it. So we're still looking for that clutch moment to show up for Mirage where they're able to negotiate at least a few rounds onto the board here, but at the moment it is very much an Xset sided game. You can already tell Xset as well is starting to adapt their play style on this offensive side to what Mirage is doing, and this is a, a beautiful thing to see. You know, even though you're up 3-0 and it's a game that has the circumstances that are going on right now, you want to continue to sharpen that blade and sharpen your mind when it comes to Siege overall, and that's exactly what they're doing. They continue to play at full power when it comes to this offensive end. They're not treating it like anything else except a match, and it's working really well for them. They're going to work in the Jackal as well as the Dokubi. This is going to help them with their clear. You can see Spears has already called once, and that allows the entire offensive unit of Xset to start taking in from the AVG side. Look at this clear. Look at this positioning of Xset already, and that's all due to the Dope call. Marmalade's already dead. Gero at least tags somebody up, but Xset already hot to trot when it comes through this top clear. It's going to be Yaga brought that into about 50% HP. Gera still trying to escape with his life here as he's now stranded inside of the master bedroom area, trying to catch at least one member hopping back in over the repel here. Unfortunately, uh -oh. it's going to be hard to do that. The Dokubi call is coming. He's going to get some support, actually, from Benji as he rotates up through the Astro stairs, but it just leads to a one-to-two -two exchange. Benji gets one going. Kento's able to steal one away as well. So this is still actually a palatable situation for Mirage here. Wild positioning being played out by them at this point, though, with another member of their only two-member roster now extending out, potentially play aggressively from Astro stairs. Case looks like it was down, too, but I'm pretty sure in a position that Exit does control, so I doubt that's a major issue for them at this point. However, We'll wait and see over the next few seconds how it potentially continues to evolve. Yes, indeed. And if you think Jackal is annoying, usually, oh, he's way more annoying when it comes down to positions like this. Nyx is running out. Oh, oh Yaga! A oh, drop my. shot! Nyx tries for it. He sprints through China, and he's gunned down by the quick prone. It's down to Kento to try and pick up the pieces. New member up from Mirage. He knows where one is, but it's a quick adjustment here for the member of Xset. Kento will at least be able to get one. Still has some stimmies in his back pocket as well, and he'll use those quickly to make sure he's at full HP, full capacity to be able to try and handle this situation. Definitely a winnable one at the end of the day if he can land some crucial shots to one versus two. Has to know this cross angle's being held as well as he works his way into kitchen. Knows his player's on Tetris as he's trying to deal with both of them, but Diaz too quick to the trigger all the way back inside of Memorial, he'll take him down, and x will go up 4-0. And once again, x continuing to win these rounds, primarily off of the gun skill, just completely outfragging the members of Mirage. And this is on top of normally a pretty hefty advantage inside of the earlier portions of the round two. But despite that, again, at least on this one here, as well as back on round number two, we were defending Statuary upstairs. Mirage still making these rounds close, making them entertaining at the minimum, as we're also finally going to go for a tactical timeout to see if they can do anything to change up their fate right now. You know, I think I think the big problem for Mirage right now while we're on this tactical timeout is, is obviously they can't handle the aggression of Xset. Yeah. Uh, they're just simply being outclassed in the coordination of what's going on. And not only that, but the frag potential from Xset. Every single member of that Xset roster has such stellar gun skill that you're never going to be able to find a wink link and try and punish that end. So it makes it to where Mirage have to try and take these hotly contested gunfights all the time. And not only that, but obviously at the current moment, Xset have the offensive side. They just have the better gun, so it makes it to where that environment is even more volatile for the defense. And you see, Mirage is certainly no slouch in the situation. They're trying to throw everything they potentially can at that exit, even putting the fill-in, Gera, on a roam, it looked like, at the beginning of that last round there. So really trying to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at exit right now. Uh, but unfortunately, just not really working out as exit continues to win these out. Currently leading 4 to nothing over the Mirage scoreline here. A lot of repicks showing up for Mirage as a result of that tactical pause. At least three members of the squad changing things up, rather two technically, because Garrett doesn't actually change his operator. <laughs> he just uh, ends up on the same one as he'll bring the cap can into the fold for this one. Maybe try to capitalize on the kind of haphazard style of play that Exeter are bringing to bear right now. So that may actually work out pretty well if Exeter aren't going to be checking their corners. Aside from that, though, a few other trap operators coming in, as you'll see on Marmalade as well. I like this a heck of a lot more from Mirage, not playing the site nearly as open as it once was. And this is going to force Exeter to actually have to clear things and get these walls open. Whereas before, they had a lot of angles that they could already abuse because Mirage wanted to try and fight back against things like the master take, but it played more into Xset's hands than they initially thought. So they're going to make some adjustments as well as bringing in that cap can that John was talking about. This is going to pair really well with Marmalade's Thorn. Uh, the 
really is just going to focus on slowing down both of these teams. These EDDs have always been a very solid choice when it comes to try to, excuse me, get rid of uh, a very fast offensive unit, try and slow them down, force them to check all of those different door frames and everything else in between when it comes down to it. Christian's still gonna have one of those EDDs in his back pocket, so we'll see if that gets allocated later on. Also, DS Lucas with the um, uh, Hulk setup, if I do say so myself. Nix, oh no, oh, I'm seeing it. This is exactly what we want, some aggressive play style, as Xset not really aware that Mirage also has an M and K, and they can hit some windows and do some aggressive plays themselves. Oh, Benji as well, gonna take down Yaga. Mirage finally showing some signs of life. Yeah, Mirage is definitely doing so here as well. Xset's early advance is going to be absolutely shut down by the Mirage defense here as both Yaga and Diaz are caught out with no real chance to respond to it. Not a single point of damage going back on to the members of Mirage. And as we saw at least in one of these players' case, not even gonna be able to see it coming as they'll be caught on drone. Kenda will continue the streak here for Mirage as they're finally shutting down this play outright from Xset here, not letting them get anything done whatsoever as Suddenly it's down to just Gomez and Spirits here. Gomez trying to line up a good nade upstairs, but it's a little off the mark, so it just does about 10 to 20 damage to two different players. Goes for it on a second one, and now, as well, just gonna get randomly shot at from the top-down angle. Nothing opened up that would have allowed the players on Mirage to see Gomez either, just a lucky shot, but it's enough to scare Gomez away. And he will back up over towards Laundry here to try and reset his position, while Spirits is gonna attempt to push in by Bicycle. Xset getting a touch too comfortable this round and being punished for it severely by Mirage. Still have some opportunity though, as we've seen from Spirits, he is not afraid of taking a multitude of gunfights and decimating an opposing squad. He's got quite the position to do it at the current moment as well as he's working his way in through Bench's Marmalade though. We're playing things pretty tight knit next to the Wolf door. Gomez gonna be able to take down one Spirits with the other and he's gonna be able to heal himself back up. This is what I was really worried about. He's gonna continue to check these angles. They do have a flank coming through for Mirage that could end up picking up one of these kills, but don't know if they have any insight on that location. Gomez now warmed up for his potential first death here. He is currently 10-0-3, has no info on this player. Should be relatively easy for Kento, and that'll be Mirage's first round. Mirage, a definitive stance finally going onto the board after four straight rounds for X set. We'll see if this is a turn of the tides, potentially, or just a passing wave. As Mirage, once again, still look to try and solidify themselves, pick up as many rounds as they can here, despite the circumstances they are currently facing against. For those who are unaware, of course, they are missing a mainstay member of their roster, uh, as he unfortunately has a positive COVID diagnosis uh, and is not feeling the best right now. So he had to step out for today and their coach Garrett is filling in, trying to make up the difference here. But as you're seeing, Exit still in control of the large majority of these rounds, but that tack paw is doing wonders for Mirage as they flip that story completely on its head and give themselves a fairly one-sided round up until the 2VX there. Yes, indeed. And, you know, that's also just the scary thing about Xset. Look at the opportunity that they still had there inside of that 2v5. You know, you have one more thing, just a singular thing go wrong for Mirage, and that has a lot of potential to yet again be an Xset round and sit at 5-0. But fortunately enough for Mirage, they're able to stick to their guns and take the round there near the tail end. Now it's a 4-1 lead instead of a 5-0 for Xset. They're gonna sit back onto the Dokabi here as Spirit slinks back over to that. Let me making sure to uh, fit the Fink in. Uh, when it comes to the lineup, though, as well. This is a very solid choice, as we've been seeing her time and time again in the last nine months, and we'll continue to do so until these LMGs get patched. So Xset looking to make up for that dropped round and still give themselves a very, very definitive 5-1 scoreline. And Mirage, of course, looking to prevent that very spread out setup here to start things out on their kitchen defense with, of course, that emphasis on the living room downstairs here being played out by Kento and to some extent Benji too, although Benji's fallback is more than likely going to be a directly into the site play instead of having to go all the way around into the living room to support his teammate here. You'll see, he'll have the window blocked off by the Keeper Barricades, but will not be able to pre-fire his opponent immediately upon its destruction. Should have another one though to chuck right back on there and continue to deny any potential entry from X set here. I mean, if I'm DS, I just keep taking this. If you're going to keep handing over the uh, Kiba barriers, then I'll just punch them off a mud window so you can't use them in a more influential part of the map later on. Uh, that's going to be two of those blades already down. Benji's got two in his pocket, which means he has one more on the way. Benji already getting tagged up as well. Spirits is still alive as he uses his first phone call. Kendall, luckily enough, will be able to heal up Benji if he so chooses. There's a lot of different angles that Xset, as well as Mirage, have to worry about, though. Look at the amount of openings that there are around this area. There's only 10 people in the entirety of the map, five on each team, obviously, and there's 
way more angles than all of the people that exist currently in this map. So could be some mismanagement. It's all going to be on the timing in between these two squads as to see who has the leading blow on the other squad. Kento leaning into this library peak, but he'll get taken down by Spirits. An ill-advised swing will get him killed. And now Christian with an opportunity, but he's going to lose it out on the back end as well. Won't die, but won't be able to find the kill either. Arm going to be dropping down, advancing back from that upstairs position as they no longer need to maintain it here. It's also a huge risk to continue doing so, especially with Benji being in a bit of a hot spot right now over here towards the Astro stairs. Yaga more than ready for the swing from Marm. Still trying to look for Benji, though, as the intended target. They'd already got damage onto him from before, but they find Marm by accident as she attempts to move out and refrag the damage done to Benji. Doesn't work out. I mean, the X set has primed themselves for the execute again as they bring it down to a 5v3. A little slow, but Benji will be able to take down Yaga as he re did reposition himself into Pantry. Nice pickup from him. It makes it to where this is a little bit easier for Mirage, but as soon as I say that, Nyx will get taken out inside of Lawn 3. Diaz with a very sneaky play back into Pantry as well as it's all down to Christian yet again. You have to feel for the coach in this situation. He'll get gunned down from Diaz. It'll be Exit with a 5-1 lead. A very smooth one at that. Is It's been a cool, calm, and collected Exit. The entirety of of this half, including the round that they lost. No sweat on these brows. Rough play there for Benji specifically, as you saw him just inching his way out into Pantry, trying to get one more fight going his way, but could not make it happen. As he was playing his heart out there, trying to defend like three different positions on that site, especially after all of his teammates had gone down. Just no room left. The play into that scenario and ends up overpeaking just a slight amount into a member of Exet, who was more than ready to take him down. So Exet continue to lead here, five to one in their favor. Just need two rounds on this defensive half, and the game is theirs. I mean, you know, th those rounds, especially some of the later rounds, it really did feel like Mirage was just bearing it all to exit. Like, yeah, everything's open. We're just trying to take gunfights. Uh, and I guess we'll just see where the cards lie at the end of the round. And that's really the environment that Exet thrives in. Uh, I really don't think it was necessarily the best choice, especially with some of the later round decisions like the, uh, from the likes of Nyx. I mean, Exet has all of their manpower still up and you're sitting inside of Laundry. They more than likely still have drones. They're going to search that area. You know, so some of uh, those like one-off positions that Mirage have been adopting into their play just haven't been working out for them. And if anything, it's been uh, something that Exet has been able to exploit to push themselves even further into the round and uh, while maintaining not only their advantage, but pushing themselves further farther ahead. All right, it's time to see if Mirage, the side flip, will change things up for them, give them that little bit of a confidence boost they need to pick up a few more rounds, maybe even run for the comeback, but ultimately Exet going to get quick control over this matchup, especially under the circumstances, and we'll see if they're going to be able to oh. do that, Yaga, <laughs> just casually shutting down Kento as he's out in the open, ready to take on anyone who would challenge him. He does find a target, and unfortunately for the Mirage roster, it's probably one of the most impactful ones when it comes to utility as well. Finca, meaning no mid-round boost-ups on the health pools, and two nades also down before a chance to use them is given. He, he made the most ill-advised thing you can when you're playing Siege Online. He held an angle, John, he immediately <laughs> died for it. Can't be doing that. Oh, Nyx wants to test it now. Yes, he does indeed. Gomez also playing around a stairwell here. Nick's actually going to back off and apply the drone instead. Benji's going to try and come in and help him. He'll be able to successfully achieve that. Skino will go down. That's going to be the smoke player gone as he swings wide on the main stairwell. Evening things out at least, keeping it in a close match right now. But Yaga wants to shut down all of this pressure from Art Studio's side. And it seems like he wants a piece of the main door action too. Benji ready for that challenge in the meantime. Marm trying to push somewhere upstairs. If I'm looking at the case position correctly and she ended up going down there, potentially over towards study, but she's gonna end up falling just outside of the window there. Another one knocked out. It's also the hard breach gone. Keep a barricade just chucked out. And you really Yogg's see. just free balling it. He's just like, <laughs> I, you know, this character's even... kind of cool. I'm just chucking these things. He I... hit the stairwell. It did nothing. He throws the other one. It doesn't even yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty angle. sure they like both just like went onto the wall. Oh, so gosh. Oh, I mean, uh, at least Yaga can shoot straight. That's that's really what matters at the end of the day when it comes to Siege. But he's, he's no. playing around with these. Yeah. Trying to see what works. Yeah, it's it's a new op. She's a lot of fun. I can't blame him for having a good time and just like picking it up. You know, those those uh, Kiba barricades are, are going to continue to be uh, a nuisance to the offensive unit. Speaking of being a nuisance, Exet has done a pretty bang-up job of that this round. They constantly are getting kills on Mirage without a refrag. Benji will finally be able to find one that's unrefragable from Exet. This will take down Spirits, who uh, hasn't been having the best game in comparison to what he was doing yesterday. 
Benji, though, has somebody to deal with in 90, but as soon as I say that, x -Set's actually going to back off more towards site. They don't want to give up any more bodies when it comes down to this low time situation as Benji starts clearing things out to try and forward Mirage's position. Mirage starting to get a little low on time here. 30 seconds remaining. They still need to get back case control if they're going to be looking to get a plant instead of just ending this on a DM, essentially. Gomez ready to check out the Nitro, but he's about five seconds too late. Still actually gets about half the health pool off of Gara, though, so not too bad at the end of the day. So he'll be brought down low. Well, yes, Gara will sneak off that kill against Gomez. He and his other teammate will be traded out, giving the round over to Xset and leaving them with only one more needed to lock in this match. Man, if my house is on fire, I hope DS is on call, because that <laughs> was like the most instantaneous refrag ever. This guy's call time is incredible. I mean, look at this. Watch. Christian gets his kill literally two seconds later, dead. <laughs> Just, well, he's still trying to put a new magazine in his gun, for God's sakes. Poor guy. But Axet making mincemeat of Mirage here on Villa. Hopefully you'll pair very nicely with some spaghetti later on from X set. But 6-1 is the score line in between these two. They're going to be going to Trophy and Statuary to try and seal the deal here and take a clean three points here on the second day of the NAL. X set yet again looking like a team that will be hotly contested throughout most of this stage trying to vie for that first position. Uh, it feels like we have quite a few teams that are going to be clashing throughout the stage. Stage two of the NAL, John, it's really warming up to be potentially the biggest stage you have ever had inside of North America. And that's even including like back when we used to call this Pro League, you know, and we used to, uh, you know, just have an entirely different format in which we did these things. So uh, it's pretty incredible that, you know, all the way in the year 2022 with Siege being what released in 2015 that we can have uh, such a season like we're having right now. Absolutely the case. Things definitely keep themselves competitive as we saw in our first matchup. This one as well, starting to amp things up, although the scoreline doesn't necessarily reflect it as, wow, Yaga wasting no time with his peek out here from the front door or the art studio window area, I believe is how that would have had to play out. As again, man, Kento, and again on the Finca too. Two rounds in a row now, the Finca has been dusted within the first 30 seconds of the round. Complete denial of that utility as Mirage is just not even gonna get a hope of being able to use it. I literally looked at my notes and looked up and Kento's yep. already dead. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is, oh no. Oh, DS. Okay, so, DS, it's, so yeah, no. it's, it's, it's this game now. Yeah. No, not the default cam call. That's the worst thing that you want to see. <laughs> Master side. <laughs> <laughs> DS, Lucas. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if there was a team that I could just be a part of energy-wise, it would be x -Set. They, I totally vibe with this energy so much. It's like, guys, you're not even doing the most default thing. Like, it's literally a camera that's been in the same spot for four years. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, Yaga, not again. Please, please. They've been punished enough. Mirage. I mean, like, I, I don't know how many Hail Marys they got to say to get out of this situation, man. It's it's just been very poor from them. Unfortunate circumstances once again for this series, but Exit taking, uh, taking it to them in every sense of the term. Given the situation once again, for those who are not aware, Mirage is currently playing with a fill-in, and they had, as far as we're aware, at least minimal time to prepare to play with a fill-in, so there's not really a whole lot we can throw on Mirage for this type of scoreline right now. They're just kind of vibing with it and we do respect them for as, that at As least. much as you can. Yeah, pretty much as much as you can here, as they're having a good time in the chat at least. But Mirage potentially being pushed to the end of their rope here over the next minute and 15 seconds. We'll see if they can make up the deficit for oh, all the 5 That's Nix, Nix. aggressive, but he can't even hear the pressure boiling down the Astro stairs. Kino comes stomping in oh, with that no. shotgun. <laughs> Gomez catching out Barm's position down below as well here. So X set just rolling into him at this point here. Benji is able to fend off the aggression and finally shut down Kino at least. Their other player needing to pick up the pace oh. though and work their way back in. There's oh, an opening God. for Gara, but he's missed the opportunity to actually take out the player. Corrects on it, however, and does manage to successfully knock out Gomez. Diaz though, inside of the connector, will trade it back out against Gara. Benji now left alone, and he will be outwitted here by Spirits. Exit, lock in the 7-1 victory and take home the W here today. Man, somebody's got to fix the coin. I don't know what's <laughs> I don't know what's going on with it. It's a uh, big Mirage supporter, but not picking Mirage on the best of days. Exit will take the dub 7-1 in convincing fashion. Looking as solid as ever for the squad.
Went for a bold prediction there, the coin, but yeah, just didn't want to pan out. As unfortunately, the situation that Mirage is up against was just too much to play with, especially on a map like Villa. Just way too much coordination and things that can go wrong. There are way too many ways for Exit to change up the status of a round two. And we saw that on display. There was moments where Mirage had absolutely no problem picking up some of those opening kills because Exit was kind of playing it a little bit more straightforward, a bit haphazardly, may have not necessarily been checking everything. But the moment Exit realized, like, okay, we're pushing this a little too far, we might lose the round, they would back it up, they would reset, they would find a way to win it in multiple scenarios. So props to Exet for playing this out so well also and shutting it down without too much resistance coming in from the Mirage side. Absolutely the case, my friend. With that being said, folks, that's going to be it for game two of the day. We hope you enjoy, but we still have three matches to cover for the remainder of the day. So stick with us as we throw you to a little break and we'll be back with the analyst desk. Drippin' Aquafina, I'm sippin' 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make digits, I'm my, my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, and hey, you want us to run when I tell a peace. Love is love. Love is love. I love. Bindo, bindo with the switch again. Boy, deliver like he heffin' Core with digits, give him estimates. Summer sauce for my Benjamins. I got, I got what you need, baby. Start the Chevy, make a scene, baby. L.A. B.B. been the team, baby. Bim Bim Papa, word the G, baby. Look, labs till I'm finished. Had a handful of lemons through the hand. Got a bag, now the hands in the business. For my hand, it's a ticket. Talking miser for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I've been playing with the minutes that they been should've gave. And I'm flipping every digit that they been should've paid. Had to find a way to get it. No, this isn't what you made. If I ever wanna dip, then I'm brink with the blade. And I'm brinking a blink on the brink of some dumb shit. Watch how I move, cause I know the brink's coming. Watch for the blues, cause I know that they dumping. Nothing in my view, so it's hush on discussion. Hush on discussions, you know what you need to. I keep it in the band to let you know that I don't need you. Y'all cats be see through, heading out the peace. You been king, I'm regal, got it in my abyss. Came through, driven, Aquafina, I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make digits, I'm my, my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, and hey, you want us to run when I tell a Peace. Love is love. Love is love. I Hold up where they got my back on pippin'. Bitch, I'm back in kitchens with the tray. Windows tinted like how black my skin is. Scoop the shorty in it from a J. Swish, she got vision just like any women giving me the K. 
getting way before the riches. Nothing more to mention. I could light a block of powder or a glisten. Boring on my body, that's a gore linen. I came through tripping Nakafina. I'm sipping 15. Kept a weapon on me. Blow make digits. I'm my my business. Stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Fool in the cut. Hey, you want us to run when I tell a peace. Love is love. Love is love. Adios. Love is love. Love is love. Adios. Love is love. Love is We are back once again at the Rainbow Six North American League desk. Doe with Jesse Jacob here with you. And that one, that one was short, wasn't it? Yeah, we're back here pretty quick. We are. I feel like yeah. we just got here. Yeah, let's check out some stats from that last one. It was not a pretty picture if you're to. a Mirage fan. Again, like, to be fair, again, oh, no. playing with their coach, poor Melton, feeling under the weather. We wish him the best. Hope for him a fast recovery. Benji Mula had a pretty solid day, but across yeah. the board, just tough situation. They're still in that roster rebuild, obviously, with Knicks coming back, Kento coming up from CL, and, and uh, it, it was rough. Easy 7-1 victory for Xset. Uh, I've heard it's Kino's birthday today. Is that, is that right? Happy birthday, yeah. Kino. Gifted the win against a Mirage that just really wasn't showing up today. I mean, they had so much going against them. Not even that they were like a worse team necessarily on paper, but just the fact that they had to play from home and they had to play with a sub. I mean, they were yeah. never going to be favorites in this game. Uh, I think it's I think it's it's fair. A little rough that you brought in your coach to sub and he's out fragging half your team. That's unfortunate. That That's is not a concerning thing, yeah. Um, Marm is hard support, and especially in such a chaotic game like this where everybody is running around getting frags, you don't expect her to really be popping off. Nix, I would have liked to see a little bit more from. Unfortunately, he has yet to find a kill on attack through two games and eight rounds. And he's the one playing Sledge. He is playing a core role that is Sledge. That's true as well. Um, so it's not ideal, but it's really hard to like look at these stats and actually take anything out of it because this sure. game was so dissimilar from a regular game. No, this game's a throwaway. There's not really much to say about it. There are nice things to look at for the side of Xset from a team cohesion point of view and looking at the way that they were able to, at the very least, secure rounds that felt like even if Gary isn't in the picture it suddenly turns into a 3v2 they're able to lock those things down but regrettably Mirage did not find themselves in enough situations that were enough of a threat to the way that Xset were setting up on defense that there's not really much that you can dive into from Xset's point of view so for both yeah. teams there's not really anything that, that's tangible that you can really take into the rest of the stage with you we do have some highlights though uh, mostly just of uh, Xset fragging out Sure. And, uh, you know, what What else can you say? Let's say? There were some fun kills in that one, absolutely. Totally, and it was nice to see Gomez having a big game, right? Yeah. It felt like yesterday, not that Gomez played bad, but Spirits really stole the show away from Gomez. Gomez like, was just like, of... like the, the, the support medic on attack yesterday. I mean, right? yeah, he was like, he was there with Spirits. He was trying to help out on some of those frags, and this time they kind of split that Finca roll up a little bit more. Both players tried to take it for a couple different rounds. I thought Gomez played very well here today, obviously. Right. Cleaning up the players on Mirage. It was a nice game from him, and I think that's a nice little confidence boost to send him into week two. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if nothing else, like we talked about earlier, I mean, it's practice for both teams, like Mirage, of course. Again, like uh, Guerra's in there coaching, right? And again, if I'm if I'm the coach of this team, I'm going to say, all right, let's focus on running some stretch. Let's focus on doing what we can, trying to take away some learnings from this at least, because you don't want to call it a complete throwaway. No game is a sure. complete throwaway, right? If you're, uh, you know, coaching well. So hopefully Mirage gets something out of it. Hopefully uh, Melted feels better mm -hmm. next week and uh, they come back a little bit stronger, able to kind of work those new players in a little bit uh, more effectively.
effectively, we'll say. But for now, it is a X set win, and uh, you know, I gotta say that's that's about it for that one. This was a this was a short one, but. Don't worry, we've got tons of Rainbow Six still coming at you, three maps to be specific. And the next one should be really interesting. It's going to be Astralis versus Parabellum. Parabellum, of course, in a little bit of a roster rebuild as well, but definitely showing some life from some of those new roster swaps. So do not go anywhere. Rainbow Six NAL returns with Game 3 right after this.